everybody and welcome to yet another Brit and Yankee Craft Beer Podcast. I am Phil Clark, the Brit, and I'm very pleased today to say that we are back in the Brit and Yankee pub, but we're socially distancing with a brewery that is way up north in Wakanda compared to where we are down here in the Fox River Valley. Uh, before I introduce those guys, I'm going to introduce my co-host. It's Ken McMullen again. Hi, Ken. Hey, how are you, Phil and Phil? How are you? We're good. What do you mean, Phil and Phil? We haven't introduced a guest yet, Ken. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> but no time like the present. Well, Ken, it looks like you're down in your brewery, and yep. uh, it looks like you're sampling a beer. Uh, I don't know if it's one of our guest beers yet, but we'll find out. So, over here is my good, well, I say my good friend. He's become my new friend. <laughs> from Wakanda's Sidelot Brewery, it is owner and head brewer, Phil Castello. Hello, Phil. How, How are you? How are you guys? We're doing really good. It looks like you are sitting in your tap room, and uh, are you busy? <laughs> we, we are not busy at the moment. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting in the tap room, our very empty tap room uh, right now. But uh, yeah, it's exciting to be here with you guys. Well, thanks a lot, because it's been a bit of a, a journey to try and uh, get to talk to you. And I first came uh, to know your beers. I knew about your brewery, but the first time I came to taste your beers was the Christmas in July um, thing that they did for uh, the uh, Illinois Craft Brewers Guild. And I think you had contributed two, if not maybe three beers to that. I think it was three. Yeah, it was um, uh, a couple I think we're gonna, you're going to taste today, the Jimmy the Weasel and the Vibranium. Yep. And then we'd had a, a special release over the summer, which was our Changes in Attitudes, uh, Sea Salt and Lime uh, Goza. And if I remember rightly, Mr. John Bitterman tasted that one and he enjoyed it a lot, as I did for Jimmy Appreciate Weasel, it. which is part of a four pack here. And I should, before we go any further, um, say that we have an exciting competition, don't we, Ken? He's I drink. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. We do. As you see here, we have four beers, which we're going to be tasting today. Now, we're not going to be tasting all four ourselves. Uh, Ken and I are going to switch off a couple of two. Now, what Phil does, I, he can drink them all. I don't care. He's easy there in the brewery. But we do have this wonderful four pack this sampler four pack, which is going to be a complimentary giveaway, courtesy of the great guys at Sidelot and the Britain Yankee Craft Beer Podcast. And I'm going to give you the details on how you can get these beers right now. So let me tell you about the competition we're going to have in association with Sidelot Brewing. And that is that you can get a sample four pack of the beers that we're drinking today by simply listening for the magic phrase. And at some time during the show, I'm going to ask Ken, what's the magic phrase? He's going to tell us what it is. Then all you have to do is to go out to Facebook, like the Britain Yankee Crab Beer Podcast, like Sidelot Brewery, and send an email with your details i.e. your email address and uh, who you are. And in the body of the email, write what the magic phrase is and send this to pints, that's P-I-N-T-S, at thebritainyankee.com, pints at thebritainyankee.com. And I just want to let you know that we will have the competition open until midnight Sunday, November the 15th. So, so long as I get an email at pints at the Britain Yankee.com by midnight on Sunday, November the 15th, then you're entered into it. What we'll do is I'll print off all those. I'll pull one out at random and I'll probably post that on our Facebook account. And then we'll figure out how to get you that beer, but a beautiful, and I have it right here, a beautiful four pack of the beers that we're drinking today. It's coming your way, courtesy of the Britain Yankee, but more importantly, courtesy of the guys up at Sidelot Brewing. Okay, let's get back to the show. So there you go. That's all you have to do. And then one thing I didn't mention was that we will not be giving away your emails. They are merely for us to contact you and get the winner. 
So uh, go ahead and listen in to our show today. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, what more to say? Well, let's find out about Sidelot. So, Phil, tell us, how did you become a brewer? I, I, Sidelot came out, uh, it was kind of by accident, in all honesty. Um, I, had, uh, I had quit my job after uh, about 12 years doing it. And, you know, one of those scenarios where you hear you just kind of got fed up with it. And you knew it was time to go. Uh, so in a roundabout way, I ended up bartending again at a um, the place right next door to Sidelot. Uh, Slice Coal Fired Pizza. I was their bar manager for a while and, you know, had the great, great opportunity to curate their craft beer list and uh, pitch to uh, their owner and now uh, Sidelot's partner, uh, Brittany Barth, that, uh, you know, we should try doing a beer just for slice uh we could do one beer we could rotate it on their tap seasonally and in the uh early on in the planning process of getting that going the bar we now occupy started on fire uh which is generally bad news uh unless you kind of can use a building i i always tell everybody i said you know what you can put me out of town this was the <laughs> i got alibis for that weekend i had nothing to do with it so the fire happened here. It had been an old dive bar for a very long time. And, uh, and it was uh, the gentleman who owned it. I think that was his cue to retire. So we were lucky enough to be able to pick up the property and kind of retrofit it to, uh, to fit our very, very small, as you saw the other day, our very small brewery. And we will indeed have some photographs that I'm going to insert into this uh, video over time. But we always like to sample the beer. So my first beer is going to be one that I particularly like the title of. It's called Filsner. <laughs> and it is a Pilsner. Pilsner, Pilsner. There we go. We got that. That's my one, uh, Ken. And that's one of the four pack. A second one of the four pack is what Ken has. And tell us about that one, Ken. Uh, this is a uh, it's pale ale. It's called Yours, Mine, and Ours. 6% looks like. And cool. nice picture hops there. So. I'm that's our yeah that's our one fresh hop uh pale ale we do uh once a year it's all locally grown hops that were grown uh in our backyard here and uh and in some other places locally around town from some friends of ours Very well cool. let's open the beers ken i know we like to do it in sync so hey, you haven't opened yours yet have you no nope. oh good man <laughs> sometimes people <laughs> have premature openings you know <laughs> so let's do it in one two three Beautiful. Okay, uh, I'm going to be uh, pouring mine out into a side lot glass, <laughs> which I'm sure you'll be ultimately right. jealous that I have. <laughs> so um, as I pour that out, that looks absolutely uh, delicious. Now, obviously, I should have a Pilsner glass, but I don't. There we go. Beautiful. Makes you feel any better. We don't have Pilsner glasses either. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so tell us um, about... The Filsner Pilsner. Um, Pilsner I, Pilsner, I, I've joked yeah. for a long time. I, I call it the most arrogant beer I make. Um, you know, if you're going to name a beer after yourself, you, uh, you, you better at least be okay at best at it, right? Um, so Pilsner Pilsner, uh, you know, we classify it as a Pilsner. Uh, you and I, Phil, were kind of talking about it before where it kind of almost fits the profile of a Keller beer a little bit more with a little bit more hoppiness. It does have, you know, a little bit of haze to it. Um, but uh, it, thank you. you know. That was that was the style I was trying to think of, Keller beer, because I know it's yeah. a little bit more. I, I wouldn't, rough isn't the right word, but it's more you know down to earth, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, and it's it, you know part of that is a, you know a little bit short on the lagering time. Um, you know, you were here the other day. We don't have that much space, so um, to kind of uh, create a, a beer, a, a pils there's what well, Phil's Filsner Keller beer doesn't. There's no ring to that. You know, that doesn't yeah. sound good at all. So, uh, you know, but a little bit shorter on the lagering time, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, you kind of get this a, a touch more on the hop than, uh, yeah. than a, you know, a true, a true Pilsner, uh, German-style Pilsner, Czech-style Pilsner would have. Now, that said, um, you know, I, it's, got, it's got the kind of Pilsner aroma, which I always have a problem with, <laughs> but that's, I'm a little older, my smell's going away. Wait a minute. Uh -oh. Yep. No, I did, took a shower. I'm okay there. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do enjoy the uh, 
the flavor of this because it, it if you want something like a real clean pills, you know, that's great. This has some flavor to it that uh, and I think it is the hops in it that, that just gives it a, a slight difference. And I'm glad you said Keller beer because you're right. That's more like what it is. I was going to ask Bill Clark, are you getting uh, like bitterness or are you getting like, it says sauce top. So I'm, I'm guessing a little more spice. Um, yes. Spice, earthy, hoppy. Yes. Thing going on. Yes. I'm not getting any. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not really spicy spicy like um you know belgian spice type approach right but yes sars hops i didn't read that i'm glad you did that explains it as well <laughs> well i wanted to ask a few other things about the label i see there's a bicycle on there that's yeah. obviously a picture of phil right yeah a absolutely no <laughs> i said i've been called a dog on more than one occasion so it's it's very fitting well yeah, and, and what's the bike angle? I'm a pretty avid cyclist, so I'm pretty curious about the bicycle. Uh, I'm a, I am a, a bike lover myself. We cycle all the time. We're actually big bike supporters here. Um, you know, we make sure we have bike parking space. We have a full bike workstation outside, um, public bike workstation. So it's it's something we kind of focus the culture aside lot around is cycling. Um, you know, that, that dog's riding a fat bike. So we're getting into fat bike weather, which is right right up our alley. Um, but, uh, what's fun about the Filzer Pilzer is, you know, I, I made the joke, the most arrogant beer we make. If you're going to name a beer after yourself, you better do a little bit of good with it. So we actually donate 2% of the sales of all the Filzner to Ride Illinois. Uh, so it's one of the state's uh, biggest cycling advocacy groups, right. um, help with, you know, local bike legislation, uh, and not just local to Wakanda, but statewide, uh, bike legislation and, uh, and education for both cyclists and drivers. And Very cool. Yeah, I, I must admit, um, when I see people on bike paths, uh, that's fine because they're off the road. But if I see them like in a in a swarm, like it's a bloody Tour de France going down the road, so I can't get around them. I, I want to just want to run them over. Uh, I don't so know. We, uh, so Steve, no, Clark, <laughs> you can't do, a, you can't do that. He's an avid <laughs> anti cyclist. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, and by the end of this, uh, by the end of this today, uh, Phil, what we didn't tell you is this is actually an intervention. Um, so we're going to get you on the bike train, uh, you know, and you by know, the end of it, by the end of it, you'll be on a group ride. In England, we have a saying: when you're getting ready to uh, get rid of somebody, you say, "All right, on your bike." <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of the pilsner because this is a very drinkable beer. Uh, you know, it's one of those that I could sink down a couple, especially here. We're recording this just slightly after midday, so you know, a nice early afternoon beer, Ken. What uh, do you have in your glass with the uh, ours, mine, yours, his, theirs, pale ale? Oh, that's a really well, nice looking beer. Show good. that to the camera. Yeah, it's a wet hop pale ale. It's got wet a hop pale ale. It is a it's a mix of uh, nugget and centennial uh, wet hops. Um, like I said, just uh, we grow centennials here, and there are a couple uh, longtime friends and supporters of Side Lot. Uh, Bill and Shar Thompson and Joe and Gigi Radcliffe that had been growing hops just for the the good look in the yard, and you know one day we're just a couple of years ago. Did you do anything with these? There's only one way to find out, right? Yeah. So we've been making uh, variations of this beer. We make once a year uh, for the past uh, four years, maybe. Very cool. You should keep what making of the beer. It's, Ken? it's got it's got a nice uh, caramel malt character going. It's got a firm bitterness in there. It's it's not you know mo a lot of fresh hop beers are like way underly bittered I think, but this one's got nice assertive bitterness and and the hop character. You know when you do wet hops, you you get kind of because you're getting so much more hop plant material, you get a little more earthiness and more of that vegetal kind of thing. And it's pretty subdued in this. This is a really nice beer, really enjoyable. Oh, and ABV, I think six percent. Six percent on this one, I think. Yeah, um, my menu's not on, but yeah, I think yeah, so. It's on the can. It's nice. Uh, well, Thank you. What were you drinking again, Phil? Did you go around? I started day? with I st well, I started with the Pilsner. So you were starting the Pilsner. If you guys are going through it, I'm going to pour a little ones to uh, to go through it too. I hate being left out. Yes, you know, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> good man, good man. Well, um, one of the other questions that I wanted to uh, find out, and you've told us a lot of the story of uh, Sidelot, but 
Um, I think you said you were a home brewer at once. Well, how did your friends and family uh, kind of react once you said, I want to do this professionally? Were they like, oh, you're nuts? Or, well, yeah, let's go for it. No, uh, everybody everybody was really supportive. Um, you know, and, and, and I mean, the flip side, too, at that point, I had already quit my job. So there was nowhere to go but up from unemployed. Um, <laughs> we... Uh, <laughs> I had uh, I'd been home brewing, you know, on and off for for a long time. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, coincidentally, another Phil um, had started the Wildfire Craft Beer Company. If you're familiar with the Wildfire Steakhouses, um, he works in tandem with uh, the guys over at Church Street to create beers for the, the chain of Wildfire restaurants. That's right. So and I, of course, I, Chuck, Chuck Fort is our sometimes co-host. So we are. Well, there you go. Yeah. That. So, yeah, so uh, uh, Phil, uh, we call him Irish Phil, so you can distinct between the two of us. Uh, he, uh, he had started that, and I was kind of, you know, picking his brain on, on what he had, you know, had gone through to, uh, to do it. So, I mean, you know, friends and family, super supportive. Like I said, I think my wife just wanted to get me out of the house at that point. Um, and and it, uh, it transitioned from brewing in the house in the garage then to here. So, you know, again, big win at home for that. Nice. So, uh, that means I must be English, Phil. And uh, <laughs> you go, what, yeah. what's your heritage? I'm going to guess Italian with Castello. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So you're Italian, Phil. There we go. That's right. Ken, you're the odd man out. Yeah. Uh, call me Irish Ken. I guess. Irish Ken. Okay. <laughs> really, really a mutt, though, I guess. Uh, so you said it was, you had it tucked into a tight space. I mean, that's kind of the MO of a brew pub. You got to fit it in. Absolutely. Really nice place for tables and chairs. But so, how big's your brewery, and what do you have? You know, uh, we are about? working on a on a real hack together. What was originally a a Sabco system. Uh, it was originally a half barrel Sabco system that we have, uh, like I said, kind of hacked together and converted to a, a single barrel system. Uh, which I mean, given the the little bit of space we have back there, is uh, you're not you're not fitting much more. Um, yeah. Luckily, we do wow. have an outbuilding behind us, so uh, we actually go through this tedious process of running uh, batches up to five times a day to fill our uh, four and five barrel tanks, wow. um, which are, are in this outbuilding. So we actually have to pump the liquid out of the back of the building. It's actually right behind this wall is where we brew it. We pump it out to the outbuilding and then um, ferment in some uni tanks and uh, you know keg and, and can in there. Just say maybe you know if demand. Uh, I mean, four or five times turns to fill a fermenter is a it's a hell of a lot of work. A long day. A yeah. Brewery out in the out in the shed. And we uh, um, Phil was out there. Yeah, not even even less room out there. Unfortunately, um, you know, kind of one of the the cons, if you want to call it that, when we took over this space, is it's grandfathered into this footprint because. Uh, and we learned this because of the fire based on current zoning laws It's actually too close to the road. So if this building had to be torn down after that fire, it would have just been a parking lot. Wow. Um, so we are very kind of restricted as far as what we can do um, expanding the building. Uh, like I said, luckily we do have that outbuilding, which, which uh, helps out. Um, we had some plans before all, all this, you know, all the, the wonderful situation we're all in now. We did have uh, plans um, to uh, blow out some walls and uh, and kind of like you were saying, put some bigger stuff, um, you know, in, in expanding on the outbuilding and, and doing that. Uh, but that all got scrapped for obvious reasons. So uh, it's, it's in a holding pattern. And, uh, you know, wow. hopefully we can uh, we can all get to a point again where, you know, Eyeing an expansion and and uh, and funding something like that, you know, isn't a point where you're just trying to to be open and, and fund your everyday business. So, well, you could you could also, I mean, I don't know if you're doing it now, but you could also contract brew to help boost up production if you need it. You know, I mean, yeah, nobody, I mean, it's it's definitely something we've talked to some people about. Um, you know, yeah, we we've looked into it. Uh, obviously, we got a lot of great breweries around here too that I've talked to. Um, you know, there's there's definitely options for it. So it's just kind of a, yeah, you right. know, a, a pros and cons game right now. 
So, so Phil, you were also saying that we, uh, I think you have an assistant brewer who uh, we were hoping was going to be with us today, but isn't. Um, who is that? And, yeah. And uh, so that's, that's Kevin Merowitz. He was out there working like a dog when I came. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was. Kev, uh, you know, Kev has kind of uh, taken on the brunt of um, really all the work back there since we've kind of got the, you know, the whole COVID situation going on. Um, but he's been with us now, uh, going on three years. So he's, he's definitely come up with uh, a few of the beers we have. I was trying to think if it was one of these today. Um, you know, great guy, super dedicated, um, seems to like what he's doing at least. So that's a win. Was he a brewer uh, before? <laughs> he was, he was not a brewer before. I like to say that I jumpstart the, the, uh, the careers for a lot of brewers, uh, especially around Lake County. Uh, I won't name names. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, oh, go uh, he was at, he did Siebel. Uh, he had done Siebel and then um, lives somewhat locally here and, you know, saw, saw one of our ads and, uh, and we were lucky to have him. So, That's cool. well, um, I'm going to raise my glass. Ken, you can raise your glass. We're okay. going to take a short break and Phil, of course, raise your glass. There we go. <laughs> we'll take a real quick short break here and we'll come back and we'll talk about a couple more of your beers and then we'll have the magic phrase. We're back and we have more beers to taste. So let's get back to the guys. All right, guys, what uh, what do we got next? Oh, yes, that's for me to say. Our next sample beer <laughs> is uh, another one in the four-pack sampler. This is a Vibranium Black IPA. Now, I can't remember who had this beer in the uh, Christmas in July, but uh, I think they enjoyed it, as they did all of your beers. And I particularly like black IPAs because they have that roastiness and hoppiness combination uh, and I know they're not for everybody, but I'm glad you did this. And it's called, again, Vibranium Black IPA. Ken, what have you got? Well, I'm looking forward to trying that one, too. But right now I'm going to try this Belgian triple. Uh, Jimmy the Weasel. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy the Weasel. I've been brewing triples for a long time, so I'm really stoked to try this one out. And that was the one that uh, really took my fancy in the Christmas in July. I, I really enjoyed it. So, shall we do it again after three? Yes. One, two, three. There we go. Got that open. Now, I've, I've got a smaller glass this time around, uh, but that's okay because I'll just fill it twice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a win. Win across all, all ports. Now, the nice thing about black IPAs is that they pour out, and I have done a terrible job pouring it out because I've got quite a large head on mine. But what they do is they pour out very much like a stout. And uh, then you get the difference when you start to uh, get the aroma, hopefully. I I've got a lot of froth, so it may not come through yet. Oh, yeah. Yep. Nice roastiness and a hoppy background. That's really cool. So tell us the story of the Black IPA. Why did you decide to do that? Uh, the Black IPA was uh, one of our uh, last summer we did like an employee series. So everybody that worked here got to come up with a beer idea, uh, come in and help brew it and, and give their input on making it. Um, we were at kind of at the tail end of the height of um, uh, the Black Panther uh, the big black, black, black Panther uh, movie release uh, was a really big deal. It was a really big deal in Wakanda because it takes place in Wakanda. So um, we put oh, that yeah. one together and it was kind of at the be uh, this time that we can, it was at the beginning of, um, you know, all our, all our current fun. And yep. uh, so on the side of the can, you see there, it's got the Wakanda forever, which is a black, uh, black Panther tagline. And then it's got Wakanda Strong on the other side, which is kind of a big thing with a lot of signs here around town, um, you know, to support all the all the local businesses kind of getting hit. Uh, and did they actually, was it actually spelt the same? No, it's not. It's in the movie, ah. it's spelled uh, W-A-K-A-N-D-A. -A -A. Um, you know, but I don't think you can really go anywhere now and give your address and say Wakanda without kind of getting a side-eyed 
<laughs> okay, where, where are you really from? Well, uh, now, what's the hops in this? Uh, in, uh, in Vibranium, it is uh, Warrior and Cascade. Because I, what Warrior, is that, uh, what's the profile of Warrior hops? Because I'm getting a really, again, a really nice, uh, fresh, hoppy, earthy flavor from something in this. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be, um, um, I mean, I, I'm going to say the bittering agent of the, uh, the warrior hops. Um, those are kind of in there for our longest um, addition. So I feel like that's where you're going to get a lot of that out of. Okay. This is not your standard black IPA. I kind of like this because I like beers that have a little bit of difference in them. You know, not, I do like the smooth beers. I like this one because that roastiness comes through right at the end, but initially you get that lovely hoppiness coming through. So really good. Thank you. Ken. I'm anxious to try that. Uh, black IPAs can be, they can end up really bitter because the bittering from the hops and the bittering from the roasted malt can, it can kind of like, really amp that bittering up and make it over the top. Probably that earthy quality is the, you know, I mean, cascade hops in that, I mean, you might be kind of losing some of that citrusy stuff. Yeah. In uh, all that roasty bitterness. And I mean, there's so much flavor in it. Yeah. And that's, 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 that, that's a, yeah. sorry. That's a plus in my book to lose the citrusy. <laughs> 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 you know me. All right, Cam, what have you got? Um, so this is the IPA, Jimmy the Weasel, um, Belgian triple. triple. I'm sorry. Did I say IPA? I know I've IPA you. <laughs> that's a, that's a weird IPA. <laughs> Belgian triple. Let, let's see what you got in the glass. Let's have a look at that. Oh yeah. Got, a little, got some haze to it. It's golden. So I'm guessing you used uh, clear Belgian, uh, candy sugar. Yes, sir. And, uh, it's uh, it's got a lot of it's heavy on spice on the spice character, so it's, it's kind of creamy. The, the sweetness kind of blends with those spices and gives you kind of a vanilla character. Um, I also get uh, you know, of course, some clove and a little black pepper. It's interesting. It's really heavy on the on the spice notes of the Belgian uh, Belgian yeast. It's enjoyable. Yeah, so we're, using a, we're using a Trappist yeast out of that one. It's probably the same one I'm using. I use West. It's the West Mile Trappist yeast is where it came from. We have but, the uh, uh, we have the Y yeast uh, Trappist. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what the number is on that one. I, get, I don't know. I, I can't. I don't know off my head. I've been I'm, getting all mine from uh, Omega, and I have to look up the numbers every time I order it. <laughs> and both of but, you guys, of course, uh, wear monks hoods while you're brewing it, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. we take it to the strictest level. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, uh, you've actually given me an idea, Ken, and that's I'd love to try your Brew Monkey triple alongside Jimmy the Weasel, and then I can do a comparison because, you know, having a variety of the same style is a really nice way to kind of yeah. get different flavors. I'm curious about the malt profile in this uh, and what, what you guys put into it, if you have that on the tip of your brain. Uh, I mean, all, obviously, uh, almost all pills... Um, if you give me a second, I can cheat. Maybe, maybe some wheat. <laughs> no, no, don't cheat. So while you're, up, thinking, about that, while the, you're uh... thinking about that, Phil, Ken, what's the magic phrase? Buy local, drink local. Buy local, drink local. Thank you very much. Send your entries in now. Pints of the Britain Yankee and win this lovely four-pack sampler. How we get it to you, that's another issue. We might have to send it to you via Pony Express, but we'll get it to you. <laughs> All right, back to the show. <laughs> um, so let me ask you a question then, uh, Phil. Uh, you are up in Wakanda, and I'm going to say that there's a lot of people there who are new to craft uh, brewing because you're, you, I mean, you're getting close to Wisconsin, right? <laughs> we are. We are yeah. pretty so, close to Wisconsin, yeah. So how, are, how have you found reaching beyond, I'm sure you have hardcore craft beer drinkers come in, but how have you reached beyond that so that you've pulled the general public in who have never had experience of craft beer and now are getting a, a real good range of styles with your uh, current tap list? You know, I think, um, 
I think we're kind of lucky in the fact that we actually have a lot of um, kind of existing craft beer fans in the area. Uh, I mean, if you kind of look at the map of, of what's around us that was here before us, um, you have Tight Head, you have Wild Onion. Uh, who am I forgetting off the top of my head now, which is really terrible. <laughs> Small towns up there in your town, aren't they? Small, yeah, well, it was, it was. Um, they've, uh, they've moved on and rebranded. But, uh, but they were here, I mean, they were here in Wakanda first, uh, as far as breweries go. So, um, they actually opened their tap room on Rand Road uh, about a month before we opened here, uh, small town did. So, um, I mean, you know, what's, what's nice is there's, you know, we have, uh, kind of where we're located here on this corner, you're going to get a lot of people walking up and down. Uh, there's a lot of restaurants around here, um, uh, we get a great advantage that we're one of the few places with a parking lot in this town. So, um, and you know, are, it's, it's an easy stop. It's an easy stop when you're in this area. You're opposite a big lake. We are. Yeah. Directly across from me here is Bangs Lake. Um, so you always have, you know, your uh, uh, boaters and fishermen and everything come out the weekends. Uh, and we're getting towards um, ice fishing season, which is like a whole nother subdivision out there on the lake once that gets going. So. We got a lot of people come through, um, you know. And who's who's going to say no to a beer? Let's be let's be honest. Maybe you can make an ice beer of some description. <laughs> <laughs> we've done we've done uh, um, some beer events during the ice fishing. There's a big ice fishing tournament that happens. Uh, people kind of come from all over, and we will uh, put a keg on the back of a um, sled, for lack of a better term, and pull it around the lake on a fat bike. And we sell beers, and we donate it all back to the charity that uh, that holds the ice fishing tournament. So now wow. you're now you're mentioning vehicles. That brings me up to my next question, and uh, hopefully you can display your T-shirt to its finest. <laughs> yes. When you go up to Sidelot Brewing outside, well, at present is an awesome uh, old truck, and it's that color, which. Uh, yep. my, lo- my, my good love, uh, good, <laughs> my good lady wife, the lovely Kimberly absolutely adored the color of it and, uh, oh, love you. those stickers. Cause she's a big, like teal blue person. So what the heck is that? Uh, this is, um, you know, like I said, side lab brewery kind of, kind of started by accident. We kind of got that truck by accident. Um, well, somebody, it, ran- uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh my, somebody ran into the truck once that happened. Oh, no. um, <laughs> yeah. In the parking lot before we had the patio. Anyway, uh, we, uh, we had a friend that used to, uh, rent out the truck for events, uh, weddings, things like that to have like a really unique bar. Uh, she had sold that business, but kept the truck and was one day talking about, she had no idea what we were going to do with it. It was already that color, which kind of fits some of the stuff we already had going on here. Uh, as far as like color scheme and, uh, you know, look and feel went. Um, we made an offer. We bought the truck, uh, and we use it for for everything. We take it to weddings. Um, during our our first shutdown this year, we filled up a cooler and put big speakers on it and drove around town like an ice cream truck and sold beer out of the back of it. <laughs> so, uh, and then we started doing deliveries in it. So, um, you know, now, like I said, now it's the it's an antique vehicle, so it has to be put away at the end of October. So it, it's getting stored now and oh. be back out next spring. What's going to go in its place? Maybe. A bike? Yeah, I wish. Yeah. That, well, that's why we, we had a big pitch for deliveries at the last week of October. So, like, if you wanted the truck to come by, now is the chance. Because after that, it's going to be my Toyota, which is a lot less impressive. So, <laughs> you know, it's a, but it's, it is, it's, a, it's a true 1960. Uh, it's all original. Uh, four on the floor, manual, no power steering. It's a it's a fun truck to play around with. And I, and I think behind you, and I've got a photo I'll put up here. Is uh, above your taps is uh, some type of a laser engraved uh, metal thing of it, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. It, it uh, yeah. It quickly kind of just became the mascot for the bar once we picked it up. Which I mean was not long after we opened. Maybe six eight months after we opened, we bought it. And. Uh, it quickly, I think, was I drinking out of the glass or are you drinking out of the glass? It has the, um, yeah. I can't really see it, the circle logo on it, circle and the arrow logo. Um, yeah. 
and the truck kind of over the years kind of more and more and more took over as the mascot. So, cool. you know, it's hard to miss it when it's going down the street. That's for sure. Well, um, I know that uh, as, we, as we're chatting away here, um, Ken at this point this afternoon is a really busy guy because he has an event and he has to fill kegs, um, yeah. which I was saying to Phil off, off mic, that's a real good beer name, Phil Kegs. Yeah. <laughs> but um so let's find out uh, uh what's in the future for side lot based upon the fact that you know at the moment you know you can't do much i know you've got igloos outside you do movies and things like that but what about beers what what should we be looking forward to in these uh, coming winter months we have what's today today is the sixth so in 22 days our, uh, our Barrel Age series will be coming out, um, Barrel Age Souths this year. We have three of them. We have the Distinguished Gentleman, uh, which is a barrel, just uh, Russian Imperial Stout in a uh, Heaven Hill barrel. We have Mon Cherie, which is a chocolate and cherry Russian Imperial Stout. Mm-hmm. And, then, uh, and then a new one this year is called Kluani, and that is uh, a maple syrup uh, variant. So maple syrup uh, bourbon barrel. Wow, that's so those are coming out on the 28th and what of November. And what you buy those on? In, are they in bombers, smaller ones? They are gonna be, they're going to be in little ones. They're going to be in four packs uh, of eight-ounce cans. Brilliant. So, uh, uh, you know, we had a lot of, uh, over the, the few years we've been doing Gentlemen and, and Mon Cherie, Um I'd say our biggest complaint, if you want to call it that, uh, or our biggest, our biggest note uh, I guess is a better term, is that doing them in the 16s or the 22 ounces is a commitment when you're talking about, uh, you know, yeah. between 13 and 14 percent beers. Um, so we had an overwhelming push to do smaller ones. So four packs of eight ounce cans will be out uh, on the 28th. Do you guys have a canning line? Um, not, no. Uh, we have a very manual uh, canning setup. Is it a, we have a t- same here? We have an October canner, but do you have different? Yeah, we have, yeah. So I have I have the October canner, and then we have uh, oh I can't think of the name of the company, but it's just a manual two head filler. But that's so it's usually like- me, me and Kev, or um, you know, on a good day we have me and Kev and one of the bar managers, either Chloe or Tyler, out there. Um, we right. just bang out you know what we get because we are such small volume. I mean, really, the most we put out canning wise is you know, 15, 20 cases tops. Yeah. Um, we don't distribute anymore. We had just started putting some stuff out in stores in Lake County uh, before we got shut down in the spring. So we kind of put that on hold. So, I mean, we really only fill cans for to go here. Well, I'm, I'm curious about the eight ounce cans. Are they the same diameter as these? And you just have no. more chocolate? So, uh, I, you know, we were, we were hoping for them. They do have, who does it? Is it? Who does the little buddy? So we were looking for those, which is the same same can except squatty. Um, but oh, that's a that's a know, great based on the, that's a great name for a can, a squatty. <laughs> we had trouble getting. We couldn't get the 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 eight ounce um, squat can, so we got kind of eight ounce sleek can. So if you think of like um, those those little cans of uh, like Coke, yeah, right? you know, little yeah. soda cans. Uh, so we got eight ounce sleek cans, um, and so they are they are a smaller diameter. So. And, uh, Did you order that with your October canner? The, like the, uh, you got to get a smaller chuck on the top so that the cans fit in there, right? The, the so the can the can top is the same diameter. It's okay. the um, it's the uh, volume. I don't know what you call it, the risers, whatever. Yeah, you need a riser, yeah. and you need a different. There's like a different thing you bolt onto the back that help, helps hold it in place. Okay, but as far as so seating, I'll- the top is the same. Phil, I'll take a picture and send it to you so you can paste that in there if you want. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Can Talk. <laughs> so let me ask you one more question on those. Are they, are they, are they going to be limited? Obviously, they are limited. But, I mean, you know, are they going to be major limited? How do we get those? Can we, like, rush up there or should we rush up there? What? So you can do right now, you can go on sidelotbrewing.com slash shop, and there is a uh, pre-order. Ooh. Um, so you're limited to one of each variant for a pre-order. And then on release day, sky's the limit. Um, 
for cans. It'll they'll also be on draft. So nice. Uh, we'll have we'll have draft as well uh, on the twenty eighth. But yeah, um, yeah, that we're doing a pre order now. And there's actually not that we don't have a, a contest already going on here, but uh, we are actually raffling off. We're doing one six pack. Uh, so it's two of each variant in a six pack. Um, we're not we're not selling them that way. We're not selling a mix pack, but uh, but we're giving one away. That sounds so great. So that's all on on the shop the shop part of our website. You can find all that stuff. So get on up to side lot if you really want to try. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, while we're talking right. about uh, uh, heavy beers, I did forget to mention that um, this one is six point three. I think is the vibranium. And Jimmy the Weasel is what? I can't read that, Ken. 10%. 10%. There we go. All right. <laughs> Good man. And what it doesn't these... feel like a 10%, at least oh, in my opinion. It doesn't, doesn't feel like a 10%. What I the... always tell people when they come in, especially early, I say you want to start with that one, then you get a good baseline going for the rest of your day, and then you can, you know, you can slow it down after that. Cool. And, and what are the Russian Imperial Stouts? Uh... I want to distinguish gentlemen is 12 and a half and the other two are coming in uh, 13 or 14. Oh, I want to say 13. Right. All right. So that's a evening around the campfire. I should have taken notes. I don't have it in front of me. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Time, gentlemen, please. Come on. Open your wives. There we go. I was just getting everybody out of the pub down here. Not that there is anybody. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you so much indeed, Phil, for spending some of your uh, Friday afternoon. And hey, Ken, thanks very much for taking time out of keg filling. Well, Phil, I'm, I'm glad to do these. I get to meet all these great guys that normally I drive around and go see all these breweries, but not, not right now. Yeah, no, yeah no, now is not the best time, but, you know, we still always encourage everyone to come out, right? So, sure. Phil, give us the details and how we find you. Um, the easiest way to find us is we are right in downtown Wakanda, uh, right at the corner of Main Street across from the lake. Sidelotbrewing.com has all the information you need about uh, coming here, the reservations, uh, even all the weird rules we have to follow. Everything you need to know is on that website. So Excellent. that's the best way to do it. All right. Good. Well, we appreciate um, all your support of the uh, podcast. Good luck to the winner, to the people who enter. Got this lovely four pack coming towards you. Um, and as we're doing this on an afternoon, it's uh, uh, time for us to say, I, I don't have another glass to say, oh, yes, I do. Hang on a minute. There we go. I've got one down here. <laughs> I've still got some Pilsner in it. Um, so for me, it's uh, a good afternoon from me. And good afternoon from him. And it's all together now. Cheers. 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 Thanks, Phil. Take care. Side Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. it.